Hey there, Python trainer Ruben Lerner here. And today I wanna to talk to you about grouping versus pivot tables. And I wanna show you that they're basically the same thing. And once you understand the relationship between them, you will understand them sort of what's going on, how they work and how to think about them. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna say import pandas as PD. And I'm going to say file name equals, and I'm going to load up the Titanic data set. You're probably familiar with this. It describes everyone who's on the Titanic, their age, their sex, uh, whether they survived, how much they paid, where they came from. Spoiler alert, it did not end well for everyone. So I'm sorry if this will come as a surprise um, too soon. I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to say then df equals pd read csv of file name. And we can see then that my data frame has indeed this is the class whether they survived one or zero name sex age right siblings and so so all sorts of different things okay fine so if i want to find out how much did people pay on average to ride on the titanic so i would say df of and we're going to say here fair dot mean and that will give me the mean ticket price 33, I'm going to assume dollars. I actually never checked into this. Let's assume dollars. Okay, so far so good. But how much did people pay on average for, you know, for a ticket per, let's find out here, you know, per class, right? So we'd assume that people in first class would pay more than second class would pay more than third class. So if I say DF group by, and now I have to do, so, so to run a group by, I need... So I'm going to need a categorical column. And all that means is a column in which there's a reasonably small number of distinct values. You can basically use anything you want for this categorical column. But if you use a floating point column with lots of different values, like how much rain fell in every city in the country, um, that's not going to give you anything useful. But if I say here categorical column, for example, P class, the class of ticket that people had, oh, then that's going to work out pretty well. Then I will need a numeric column. In this case, it's going to be the fare. And then I need an aggregation method. And aggregation methods basically say, I'm going to take a lot of values in and give you one value out. So I'm going to take the mean of all of the fares. That takes many values in, gives me one value out. So I'm going to say here, group by of, I'm going to say P class. Then I'm going to say here, fare. I'm going to say dot mean, and that's how we construct our group by, and we can see that first class passengers paid 87, second class passengers paid 21, and third class passengers paid 13. Okay, not so bad. But then what if I want to find out, did, you know, how much did people pay on average per class and per sex, meaning gender as we would put it nowadays, Right, so I can say then df group by, and then I give it a list. I say here p class comma sex. And then I'm going to say fair. I'm going to say dot mean. Now, what does this mean? No pun intended. This means that first we're going to find out per class, then we're going to find out per sex. And that's what I get. I get then a table, more or less. We're going to talk about that in a moment. Really, I get back a series. I get back a series, a panda series, but the index on that series is a two dimensional multi index. Why is it two-dimensional? We get a 2D multi-index because we grouped on two different categorical columns. So we have now class on the outside, one, two, and three, and we have sex on the inside, female, male, female, male, female, male. And we can see, by the way, I always find this fascinating, the female tickets cost more than the male tickets in every class. Never, never would have expected that. Okay. Is there anything wrong with this analysis? No, not at all, right? This makes a lot of sense that we are able now to group by first class and then sex. And you can even imagine grouping by more than two levels in the hierarchy. This kind of two level or multi-level group by is very common when you have, well, hierarchical data. You can imagine years and months. You can imagine countries and regions. You can imagine products and subproducts. You can imagine a team and individuals, right? There's all sorts of different ways that you'll want to arrange and calculate on your data to analyze it hierarchically. But here's the thing. What I just did could also be expressed as a two-dimensional table, right? In other words, what if the P class 
were the rows, right, the index, and the sex were the columns, right? Would that have the same data? Actually, it would. So I can do that, and we can do that with a pivot table. So I now say df.pivottable, and yes, there is a pivot method. I much prefer to use pivot table. It's just way more flexible and useful. Say index equals p class, and then I'll say here columns equals sex. Then I'll say values equals fair, and then I'll say here agfunc equals mean. And I put that all together, and look what I get. It is precisely, but precisely the same data. It's just displayed in another way. Now, I could, of course, have swapped the index of the columns. That doesn't really matter. But the idea is that it's the same data. This is why I like to say that a pivot table is really a two-dimensional group by. It's a group by that we do on two different categorical columns. It's exactly the same as we did on the group by before. It's just presented, I would argue, in an easier way, easier to understand way. Here's the other thing. The name pivot table is terrible. <laughs> Who sees this table and says, oh yes, I can see where we pivoted. All right, are you ready? I just figured this out a few days ago and, and I'm not, I don't think this is really why it's called that. But if you imagine here, my two dimensional index, right here on the outside, I have the class, P class, and here on the inside, I have the sex. Watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pivot it 90 degrees and get the table. So here, it's a two-dimensional multi-index on a series, and here it's rows and columns in a data frame, in a two-dimensional data frame. So that's what I think of when I think of pivot tables versus group buys. Now here's the other thing. Let's say that I have the 2D uh, multi-index on a series. Can I turn that into a pivot table? And the answer is yes. So I'm gonna grab this. And I'm gonna say here, okay, I have this thing now. What I can then do is I can say unstack of sex. And look what I get, it's exactly the same thing. What does unstack mean? It means take it out of the index on the series and move it to be the columns on a data frame. Can I, by the way, given a table like this, move it into a multi-index and I can say uh, stack. And there we go, it worked just fine. By the way, if you're thinking, hey, what if I wanna unstack the P class instead, can I do that? Of course you can. I just say here, unstack of P class. And now the sex is on the uh, uh, index on the rows and the P class is now across the columns. This is why people love stack and unstack so much because they allow us to turn tables into series and series into tables through the use of a multi-index. Okay, I hope that this explanation gave you some clarity into grouping versus pivot tables and how they're really the same thing, just viewed in a different way. That said, it's not a small thing to see things differently, right? I often told my children when they were younger that a lot of mathematics is rewriting something you already know in a different way so that you can understand it better and work with it better. And that's the same thing with this data. So sometimes it'll be really useful to have it in a group by with a multi-index, and sometimes it'll be really useful to have it in a pivot table, and sometimes you want to move back and forth. All are reasonable depending on your data, depending on your needs, depending on what analysis you're doing. All right, I hope this was helpful. I hope this opened your eyes to some of the ways that these things are related. Let me know what you think. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll be back soon with lots more about Python and Pandas.